Good morning. How are we all this morning? Yeah, it's a, it's my, I use my favorite expression, it's a tigger day, isn't it? A very blustery day, isn't it? Tigger, you know that one, Winnie the Pooh? Anyway, well, and welcome to South Leith Parish Church as we gather this Christmas Eve to anticipate and await the coming of the Christ child. This morning's service is a service of lessons and carols to you know, just refresh the Christmas story once more amongst us, and I hope you'll enjoy it. Warm welcome to any visitors who are coming to join us this day. Be sure of a warm welcome here in South Leith. You are very welcome. Also to any of those who are watching on the live stream, welcome to the service as well. You are part of this family here in South Leith, so don't feel you're a stranger at all for anyone who's gathered with us today. All the words to all the hymns will all be on the screen, so you don't need any hymn books. You can just stand up, lift your heads up, and praise the Lord. How about that? You're going to do that this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. So there we are. Good, good. A bit of enthusiasm. There we are. Okay. Um, Intimations are as in the print. There's also, um, just a reminder, a couple of other services today because it's Christmas Eve. At six o'clock, we have a week family service, a Chris Tingle service, where we're, if you don't know what a Chris Tingle is, you have to come at six o'clock to find out. So there we are. And then our watch night service is at um, half past 11, our watch night service to bring in Christmas Day. Again, all are welcome. I'm also going to say when you came in, um, you got a little handout, and this is really about the changes that are happening in the Church of Scotland, and in particular, the church here in our part of Edinburgh, in Leith, and how we've been working, as the note says, over the last couple of years about bringing together the churches of North Leith, South Leith, and New Haven. And there's an update there, which was given out as you came in. For any watching in the live stream, if you um, you won't have that update, but um, please email myself or phone the church office and we'll send you the update. But it's just to say things are still moving forward. Um, a slight difference sometimes when to get to the end, you have to take different paths at times, as we all know. So in this case, what we are proposing is that by February, in early February next, next year, February the 6th actually, there's a presbytery meeting and what we hope to put to that meeting is that North Leith and South Leith come together in union, and then we form what is known as a parish grouping with the New Haven Church, with anticipation that over the next 12 to 18 months, New Haven would join the union as well. So the first step is for North Leith and South Leith to come together, and hopefully that will go to presbytery in the beginning of February, and if they vote for it, then we will be in union with North Leith and South Leith will be together as one and then continue working with New Haven towards um, a, a fuller union of the churches in this part of Leith. Challenging times, difficult times, at times difficult decisions will have to be made. In late January, the congregation, uh, well, the Kirk session and then the congregation will um, have an opportunity to vote on something called the basis of union which is the formal document that just sets out the criteria for the union initially between North Leith and South Leith. And um, at that time, um, you'll be briefed and uh, a vote has to be taken, whether you agree or not, with the union. I know that's a bit formal and everything else, but I think it's really important as soon as we've come to that decision to share it with you. And, um, and so you're aware of what's going on in the church. Is there any questions at this time? I know that's just, um, you know, it's okay if you want, if anyone's got any questions, but please feel free at any time to contact me by email, by telephone. My numbers are readily available um, if you want to um, have a chat or discuss it. You know, don't hold back. Think about it, and if you want, get in touch with me. But um, over the next uh, few weeks, I'm sure, as things evolve and get firmed up, we'll keep you posted with the timeline and when the votes and everything else would take place, especially for those watching in the live stream, um, to be able to vote as well. Um, there's a format now for sort of hybrid voting, if that's what you want, and uh, we'll, well, hopefully we'll be able to uh, talk about that. Okay, well that's the formal bit done in that sense. So what I'd like to do now in South Leith every week is turn to our neighbours side by side, back in front, introduce yourself, because we don't always know each other, 
and wish each other a very good morning. So first and foremost, a good morning to you all. Good morning. Good morning, choir. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Peter. Good morning. Good morning, Peter. Oh, you got coins. Excellent. So just before the call to worship, we're going to ask young Jesse. Young Jesse is, is um, the Reverend Emmanuel's um, son. He's going to bring the Bible in with the help of Alison. But Jesse's going to bring the Bible in before the call to worship. So Jesse, your big part now. And please stand when he comes in. Yay! Yeah, well done, Jesse. Hey, give him a round of applause. You're going to stay there now. I think he is. I've just been made redundant. Isn't that wonderful? Dream on. That's what we want, young people in the church. We need some new young ministers, so there we are. Okay. You all right? You don't have to read it all today. Well done, well done. <laughs> Enthusiasm, what, what, take your time. So just remain standing. So let us gather and come together as one to come and worship our God, come to learn and hear and see his story. Let God's light shine through us this day and let us worship God and let us do so by singing our first hymn, Once in Royal David's City.
the first lesson, the lamp speaks. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. A lamp shines into the darkness, a pinpoint of light in a dark night. We know how our eyes will find even the tiniest spark of light when everything else around us is dark. For light is stronger than darkness. At night, when a lamp is burning, open the door on the darkness and see what happens. The lamplight shines out and takes over a bit of the darkness. Never does a piece of the darkness fall into a lighted room and take away some of the light. Even a simple lamp enjoys the power of light. Its flame allows the light to shine where we need it, into the dark, darkest corners of house or stable. A single lamp can show us the pathway on the darkest night, so no one stumbles while carrying a precious gift. A lamp shining in the doorway welcomes us in from our wandering. Its warmth pushes away our worries, just like its light pushes away the dark. The Christmas story, according to Luke, begins. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own town to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child.
second lesson, the lamp speaks again. But what is a lamp without hands to strike the match and light the wick? A lamp cannot light itself. What is a lamp without hands to hold it up so its light shines into those dark corners? A lamp cannot lift itself high. What is a lamp without hands to open the door and let the lamplight shine out into the darkness? A lamp cannot open the door. A lamp needs a life to look into the darkness and see who needs light to brighten their path. A lamp needs a life to light the wick and set the light shining. A lamp needs a life to open the door and hold it up high. A life that will welcome a stranger into the light, into the warmth, into a heart and a hearth. The prophet Zechariah declared, Rejoice, daughter of Zion. I am coming. I shall make my dwelling among you, says the Lord. So let us come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, through your message of love and hope, you tore open the heavens and came down to your fragile, faithless people. On that first day, Lord, something amazing happened. Someone special, world-changing arrived. So as we gather as your people to share and hear your story once more, to bear witness to your light, to hear of a child born in weakness, but a child that came in the power and gentleness of the Spirit, to bring good news to the poor and justice to the nations, so as we gather here this morning, let us open our hearts and our minds to welcome you and all in his name. That as we gather as your people here in South Leith, may his hope, his peace, his love transform our broken world. Fill us with grace, with love and compassion for our neighbor. But Lord, as we gather, we also know that so often we do not share the light the season speaks of. That through our words and our deeds, we often fail to be the witnesses of the light you so want us to be. So, Lord, in a moment of silence, we bring before you our confession. Bring before you only those things we can share with you, knowing that you are listening and forgiving. Forgiving God, graceful God, grant your faithful people pardon and peace. That as we hear your message, let us remember it is a message of hope, a message of love. A message that so needs to be shared this Advent and Christmas time. Because Lord, that is what you willed for this world. And we are tasked to continue to build this world to make it a better place, a more loving, tolerant understanding place. And this be a prayer we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever, who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The third lesson The Manger Speaks. What is a manger? Just a few pieces of wood nailed together to serve a good purpose. That's all a manger is. Just a set of wooden arms, strong enough to hold a new bundle of hay each day. Still, 
A manger protects its bed of hay, keeps it clean and dry, keeps the mice away. A manger stands guard to offer its food, its source of life, to animals who rely on its steady footing. That manger also always stands ready for whoever needs its nourishing cargo. That manger will open its wooden arms to welcome the hungry lives which gather around it. Lives that trust the manger holds what they need for the future. The Christmas story, according to Luke, continues. While they were there, the time came for Mary to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. fourth lesson, the manger speaks again. But how can a manger become a cradle for more than a bundle of hay? Can it be a cradle without hands to prepare the bed and welcome more precious cargo? Can a manger become a cradle without hands to lay a newborn to rest, hands which settle and soothe and tend new life? Can a manger be a cradle without hands tiny and perfect, reaching up, reaching out for attention, for warmth, for love? A cradle needs a life to smooth the bed and smooth the forehead. A cradle needs a life to rock the baby and sing the soothing lullaby. A cradle needs a life to shelter 
resting its tiny head, trusting itself to the manger's wooden arms and the mother's willing arms. lesson, the staff speaks. Not much goes into a staff. It's cut from a tree and carved to be useful out there in the wild. A staff is just a walking stick, sturdy and dependable, something to lean on if you're weary. A staff gives that extra footing when the path is slippery or your knee is stiff and sore feeling the weather on a cold, damp night. For a shepherd, a staff offers a bit of support along a rocky path. That staff gives an occasional prod to remind a stubborn sheep to move along to meet the next green pasture. And a staff with a bit of a curve comes in handy when a wayward lamb gets stuck in a crevice or a muddy patch in the field. The Christmas story according to Luke. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. Yeah. 
the sixth lesson, the staff speaks again. But what is a staff without hands to grip it firmly? What is a staff without hands to place it wisely for sure support? What is a staff without hands to prod that sheep gently through the winding valley? Hands to hook the crook around the silly lamb that got stuck and pull it to safety. A staff needs a life to test its strength. A staff needs a life to lean on its dependability. A staff needs a life who knows the sheep and sees how they go astray. A staff needs a life unafraid of the danger, a life to kneel down and rescue the lamb, pulling it free, guiding it on the way. The seventh lesson, a gift speaks. Christmas is a time of gift giving. Think of all the gifts wrapped up and waiting under your tree. Each gift is a piece of love chosen for someone special. Each gift is a piece of hope waiting to change someone's life. A gift is that little piece of joy given to make someone smile. Now, the Christmas story according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. 
When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The eighth lesson, a gift speaks again. Yet, what is a gift without hands to present it? What is a gift without hands to unwrap it? What is a gift without hands to hold it up in wonder, to cherish it, to play with it, to touch the love it bears and make that love your own? A gift needs a life to give it. A gift needs a life to receive it. A gift needs a life to unwrap the love inside and share that love outside with all who wonder how love can give so much. The Christ child is a life born for us born with us to offer us God's gift. The Christ child is a gift 
with the love for each one of us so wonderful that we can share that love with others and never have the love run out. Christ is the gift God gives today. Christ is the gift we receive today. Unwrap this gift for yourself and share this gift of love with everyone whose life touches you. Please be seated. Let us once more come before God in prayer as we bring our prayer of dedication and prayers for others. Let us pray. Loving God, you are generous beyond what we can understand. We thank you for the gift of Jesus at the heart of Christmas. We thank you for those who chose to say yes to you stepping out from their security into lives that could never, they could never have imagined. So accept our gifts this day, given from our daily lives to serve you and to build your kingdom this day and every day. With these gifts, help us to serve you in faith. Help us in this season of light and joy to dedicate ourselves to living our lives in ways which express your love, your faithfulness, your generosity. And now we bring our prayers for others. Loving God, as we wait this Advent to celebrate your coming, help us to pause and reflect on what our Christmas, our Christmas celebrations are all about. Help us to think carefully about the choices we make as we shop, eat, and prepare. 
Challenge us to make decisions which are based on your kingdom values rather than just what we see outside in our lives in our consumerized world. So, Lord, help us to pause and consider in the coming days what will truly make us happy and give us the energy so we can seek the light that is your coming. And in the midst of work and celebrations, help us to make time for you, for ourselves and those around us, so that our Christmas is seen to value others. But we remember these days those for whom Christmas will be very difficult. People separated from their loved ones by distance, conflict, or disagreements. We pray and remember Christians all over this world preparing to celebrate your coming, yet also experience hard times, challenging times. We think of the people in Gaza and Israel, the people of Ukraine, and far too many other places in this world where outside their front door they don't find the peace, the love, the hope that we speak of. But instead they just find destruction, fear, hate, intolerance. Lord, be with them. Enter into them as you entered into this world to bring a new sense of hope, a sense of light. So, Lord, shine your light in all this day. Be with all who are struggling this day, that there will be hope this Christmas time, that a new order may truly come, that freedom, dignity, and hope is what is cried out this Christmas time. And let it not just be on Christmas, but be every day, so your kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. And these prayers and all our prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So just a thank you to all our readers to share that message of lessons and carols and some reflections as well. And now we're going to end our time together but reminding that there's other services today. There's a Christingle at 6 o'clock and our watch night at 11.30 to which all are welcome. And if you're not, go and enjoy your Christmas time. Enjoy meeting with friends, with family if you can and celebrate Christmas and the light it speaks of. So let us end our time by singing that hymn, O Come All You Faithful.
Let us now leave this place seeking the light that is the Christ child born again into this place in this time and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you all, within you all, around you all this day and evermore. Uh,